Hi Tom, my name is Steve Nagel. I live in Brownsdale, Minnesota. I used to live in the Twin Cities. And back in about 1994, uh, Russell Rhodes did a story on my daughter that we adopted from Romania who came back and tested positive for HIV at the time. Uh, this was an issue on uh, the drug AZT. Uh, I am going to show you a clip of the piece that you did back then. My apologies because I don't have time to do this very professionally, but I want, to, want you to take a look at it and see if you have an interest in the story. Once the clip is done, I'm going to come back on and tell you what has developed with the story since then. So please take a look. Thanks. Telling about a mother who adopts a baby with AIDS. The antiviral drug AZT is one of the most common AIDS treatments, but some question the drug's effectiveness. A local family stopped using AZT to treat their daughter, and as Russell Rhodes tells us, it's a decision the couple is glad they made. <laughs> Lindsay Nagel looks healthy, and she is, despite the fact that Lindsay is HIV positive. Lindsay's parents discovered she had the AIDS-causing virus just after they adopted her from Romania in 1990. For Cheryl and Steve Nagel, the news was devastating. We automatically knew that she was going to be gone within two years. So we may as, well take, may as well take back all the charges and everything we had and just put it all towards the funeral. Immediately, doctors told the Nagels to put Lindsay on AZT, and almost immediately, Lindsay began getting sick. Steve and Cheryl think it was the side effects of the drug. Eventually, they stopped giving their daughter AZT. We had come to the decision that uh, we, we would rather that she had three good months than six bad months. We weren't going to go through what we've seen other kids in this area go through just simply to keep somebody alive. So the Nagels chose a holistic approach, good nutrition and vitamins. They found a doctor to help them, and today, at three and a half, more than a year and a half after stopping the AZT, Lindsay Nagel is doing just fine. She still has no symptoms of AIDS. Back and forth, back and forth. It was a difficult decision, but one the Nagels believe was the right one. Glad you did it. Oh, absolutely. No doubt. There's no doubt in my mind that, that she wouldn't be here uh, had she stayed on the drug. There are no guarantees that Lindsay will stay healthy, but for now she's doing fine, and that's enough for Steve and Cheryl Nagel. I love you forever. I like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby, you'll be. Russell Rhodes, Channel 5, Eyewitness News. The Nagels believe that Lindsay contracted the AIDS virus during a blood transfusion in Romania when she was just a few weeks old. Our quick look at world news. I don't believe Russell Rhodes is still associated with KSTP, so I'm hoping that you can take some interest in this story. This is a picture of, of my daughter, Lindsay, who's now 22 years old, has never been on medication since you guys did the story back in 1994, and is completely healthy. She just gave birth on December 19th to a healthy baby boy. His blood work is all perfect. Uh, he was born healthy. Uh, however, at the foot of the birth bed on December 19th, Mayo Clinic came in and demanded that we put this child on the drug that almost killed my daughter. And we were reluctant to do so. So they contacted Moore County and charged my or threatened to charge my daughter with child endangerment so we agreed to put the child on the azt he was in the hospital for two weeks and then we finally got the baby home and then the county stepped in the hearing everything is open uh, right no i understand i'm just wondering i just would like to see the petition this is based off of because it seems like it would obviously be off of information that might have been false, and this doesn't seem, uh, it seems like a, it was made under false, a false affidavit or a false petition. If it says that the whereabouts are known, I think the child's been here as far as I understand. It's neither here nor there. Basically, what we have is a court order, though, um, saying that for now the child's going to be placed in protective custody. Right now there's an order in place, so it would, you know, you've got to follow it, or else you're going to be in contempt of the order, so... Uh, and I've been documenting everything, so that's all going to be available. And, you know, I know it's 
hard, but I mean... It's not hard, it's stupid. Okay, but you have to understand there's going to be a court hearing. It's nothing that's going to be permanent or anything like that. So I mean, there's a recording here coming up, and then you just talk, talk to the well, judge about it. what are you going to do for 72 hours when I'm breastfeeding him? Well, yeah, I understand that. You might have to get, you know, pump it, and then they're going to get formula or whatever else. Where will the child be kept? <laughs> I'm going to have that slow as a foster home. It would be a what kind of license? A license foster home? Okay. As you can see, Tom, the baby was literally taken off from the mother's breast and was supposedly going to be put into uh, foster care. Well, that didn't happen because they had no way to feed this baby and he didn't bottle feed well, so he needed the mother. So instead, they took him back to Rochester and they put him. On a, on a nose feed and that didn't work very well either so they started put it they put a g-tube in him they put the g-tube in wrong so they had to take the g-tube out it was leaking on both sides now the child has an infection in his stomach is bloated since that time since just since they took the child away from the mother this is everything that has been done to that child. He's been on morphine, he's been put on uh, oxycotton, he has had a tumultuous life since the time since this happened on January 18th. The baby is still in Rochester. He's stuck there because they took the baby away from the mother. Despite the fact that we gave him the drugs the entire time, we never didn't give him the drugs. They came in and took him anyway. If you have an interest in this story, please get back to me because I, I have to get this out to the media. The judge has told uh, my wife and I that if we do take this to the media that they're going to kick us out of the courtroom. We have another judge for April 1st and 2nd. And that's our only hope. But the problem is they're going to have the same information and the same judge and we believe they're going to keep this child in foster care they have absolutely no reason to keep that child in foster care when Lindsay was born my daughter she was one of 12 children that was a total number in Minnesota that had HIV that was under the age of 10 years old Lindsay's the only one that's still alive so we have a good reason that we don't want to give the child the drugs but we did give the child the drugs and they still took the child away from Lindsay. If you have an interest in this story, please get in touch with me. I've sent you my, my telephone number on the email. This hopefully got to you through YouTube. Uh, I'll probably send a follow-up to see if you're interested in the story. If you're not, I'm going to have to move it on to some place that they are. But I appreciate your time for taking a look at this. And thank you very much.